Welcome to episode 304. Boom. Hey. Help me with HIPAA podcast. My name is David Sims of HIPAA for MSPs. And joining me is Donna Grendel of Card. And good morning, Doc. Good morning, David. Well, afternoon now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We've had power problems. Oh, God. I mean, it's just been a day. And then we got went down the rabbit hole of what we're talking about. Yes. Uh, yeah. So we're real excited in a bad, well, I, I hate to say excited, but we are <laughs> because there's a lot to say. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, we started out uh, today going, you know, we're going to cover a lot of these privacy questions that are coming in uh, from listeners and, and some other stuff. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of that, we discovered there is an active ransomware attack on a healthcare facility in the U.S. that is on social media. <laughs> yeah. And what a rabbit hole that is. And so we want to take you down that rabbit hole with us because we talk about these types of things all the time about what's going to happen when your practice is going through a ransomware attack and how's that play out? How do your patients feel about it and all that? Well, guess what? <laughs> we can read all of it happening right now. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't have to make any assumptions and you don't have to go, well, yeah, I know you say that, but no, mm -hmm. no, we're going to, we're going to show you. Uh, and we're going to talk about some of the things that people are saying and, and, give our commentary on it, but we're going to show you how this is a crap storm to deal with <laughs> when it happens to you. And I am being, in so many ways. It is. It's bad. <laughs> um, All right. Yeah. Yeah. We can't even tell you how bad it is. It's so bad. Yeah. We haven't made a word yet. Yeah. There's yeah. Crap storms the PG thing I can come up with. <laughs> it's bad. Oh, so before we uh, take everybody down that rabbit hole, do want to mention that the HIPAA boot camp virtual edition for August 17, 18, and 19 is open uh, for business. So if mm -hmm. you want to, if you want to get in on that, um, it is filling up quickly. So um, head on over to the HIPAABootcamp.com for more information about that. Yeah, you need to get because we've never had it this full this far out. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, crazy. And normally it's, you know, the last couple of weeks, people start jumping in real quick, mm -hmm. <laughs> but no, we, uh, we're getting yeah, in there. Yeah, it's good. It's awesome. Yep. All yeah. right. As always, thanks to our donors and uh, we do appreciate your support. And for those of you who are sharing out the podcast and leave us some reviews and all that, thanks and continue to do that. We definitely appreciate it. We need it. <laughs> All right, so that uh, brings us into our first question coming from George. Well, wait, though. What's that? HIPAA. Say what? I was waiting <laughs> on you to do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, HIPAA Say What segment was going to come from George this week. Hey, George. Uh, Don and I both know George, uh, <laughs> and George has been to the boot camp and uh, and all that good stuff. So he, uh, we had a an episode in three hundred two. We talked about um, uh, getting your patch on and patching systems and all that stuff. And so George writes in response to that, "Hi there, thanks for the episode. So, <laughs> <laughs> what about?" solar winds where the hot fixes were infected we got lucky where we did not apply the hot fixes and the network was not compromised i believe there needs to be a balance based on risk assessment on which critical assets needs updates and the time frames so we agree moving right along yeah <laughs> <laughs> so the, you know the question being uh what about solar winds and what happened there and you know, how does that affect patching? Um, and, you know, my response to that is you, you can't not patch based on what happened at solar winds. And, and to some degree, you're kind of, you're kind of screwed mm -hmm. when somebody is, is infiltrating the actual supply chain of the code. But I also think that that gives rise to looking at what type of protections you have in place and it, are you using AI behavioral based protections? Uh, because I think that's where, that's where you're going to get your biggest value you, because in the past, 
um, and even currently, most uh, IT companies and, and IT people on staff, they're looking at what you do day to day. For example, let's say you're running QuickBooks. They're going to say, okay, QuickBooks is a known application, just whitelist it. And so everything QuickBooks wants to do, let it do it. Let it update, let it do whatever. And they, it just, just whitelist everything because honestly, it's the easiest way to do it. <laughs> um, but when you look at something like what happened with SolarWinds, and it could certainly happen to QuickBooks or any other application, you have to have your protections that are not looking at the software and they're not mm -hmm. looking at whitelisted white listings and all that it's looking to say does this software do what it's supposed to do is it doing what it normally does and are, are those things okay and and the only way you can do that is through behavioral based technologies that are out there okay so to add to that the big issue though is being very careful on those decisions because the solar winds app that that was a technical app i mean it was like very specifically technical and there are a lot of assumptions within the technical community about you know should i should i not and so then they either take one or the other and mm -hmm. i think george's point is you've got to be in the middle and you have to evaluate what is the fix really about but now keep in mind the not pet you not Petya ransomware attack that spread all over the world not too many years ago mm -hmm. came from an infiltrated update to a payroll system used in the Ukraine. Right. They did not intend for that to spread around the world. Mm -mm. Yes. So you have to evaluate if you don't have the AI and behavioral analytics stuff, which by the way, David does. And he's very happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm very happy about it because that's when this, you know, when the news about this broke, one of our security vendors, and we use a stack. So it's not just an app. We use uh, layers and layers and layers of protection. But one of them emailed and said, um, you know, our solution stops <clears throat> this. Uh, and, and it's not just us saying that. We, we have evidence that it is currently stopping this. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, we were happy to, to be able to send things to our clients and say, not a problem. Yeah. You know? But if you don't have that, then it requires the manual effort, especially with, um, you know, big ticket items mm -hmm. that could have major impact. So your EMRs and your, and, and even, you know, again, QuickBooks. And those kind of things, but just know that you would not be the only one. This, uh, if QuickBooks or Adobe or whatever's hit, it's usually uh, really quick and all over the place. It doesn't have time to propagate. <laughs> all right. So yes, George, and thank you for pointing that out. We were probably rambling and did not point that out. <laughs> Otherwise, you would not have mentioned it. Because you're uh, that guy. Yeah. We love that. Yeah. He, he's the so what about guy? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say. Uh, but, right. but you know, it, but this is the, the perfect way to say you should always be thinking about things and looking at, well, what about this? And what about that? Because that's, mm -hmm. you know, basically what he's doing is he's doing kind of a risk assessment. His, his so what about question is a risk assessment type question. Yeah. Well, and I, I just this week was at a, in, in a client meeting and I'm like, well, what are you doing if this, this, and this happens? And one of them goes, I just can't think like, like a criminal this well. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah. You know, I was like, yeah, I love that part of my job. And Carla's like, yeah, she loves it. <laughs> <laughs> a little too much yeah so well the halo bangs carla in the head so she's not allowed to she can't <laughs> do it but anyway uh yeah you do you have to think about those things which is a perfect segue into what started uh, the notes for this session where i got down the path about privacy questions 
was Allison, who's been a listener and interacted social media for years, mentioned on LinkedIn when we were talking about one of our episodes about which one was it? Now I don't recall. But anyway, she asked, what about the folks, the the new laws that in order to get a mail-in ballot, you have to send in a copy of your driver's license. What, you know, what does that mean? And I'm like, I'm in one of those states and I have been freaking out about it ever since (laughs) because it is one serious problem where just the thought of, you know, there's no plan on managing those things. What are they going to do? Are you going to guarantee to me you're going to shred them? And that somebody isn't sitting there throwing one to the side every few minutes. And then those are, and if you keep them so that you can compare signatures later, where are you going to keep them? Are you going to put them online somewhere? How are you going to store them? So yeah, you need to be thinking about, prove to me, whoever I have to send this to what's going to happen next. You know, I was at, I did a, 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 an event at one point and you came in and you registered and they wanted the date of birth. And I'm like, why you don't need that. Not for what I'm doing here. So yes, you should question everything. And another part that I had been reading was about the new Apple tags Mm-hmm. Great news. They work really well. Bad news. They work really well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it, it is a rabbit hole to go down about how they work and what they do. But the big concern is that those uh, will be used effectively. And there's a lot of reasons to believe it would be very easy to use them effectively for stalkers, domestic abusers, all of those kind of things uh, in a very negative way and not something that would require a lot of effort or thought um, in order to implement, let's just say. Mm -hmm. That is a very scary thing. And it also means that the way the thing works is it tracks your location and it uses connectivity to... Uh, you know, if, if I have one on m- my gear and, and I walk by you, it might ping out to your phone and go, Hey, where am I? And your phone would answer. That's how it works. Hmm. It just asks, where am I from another Apple device? So if it finds another Apple device, it says, yo, where am I at? <laughs> and it tells them. So whenever it can find another device, that's how the tracking kind of works. It's a very simplistic, you know, explanation, but knowing that your phone could be telling those things where they are and, uh, you know, if it actually connects then and starts tracking you, you get a notification on your phone within a certain amount of time. But if you have an Android phone, they're like, it's three days without a connect. It'll tell you, okay. You know, that's, that's way too long. So anyway, lots of privacy concerns in there, bigger issues, went down that. Then ta- stuff about hackers targeting cash sharing apps. So Zelle, Cash App, Venmo, blah, blah, blah. They're not targeting the app itself. What they're targeting is people not securing and using the app properly. So let's be clear, the apps themselves, not necessarily always the problem. Mm -hmm. For, For all of the cases that that particular article covered, in every one of those cases, the user gave up information. Yeah, this this actually, actually happened to somebody I know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned it on the show or you and I just talked about it, but um, it, it's my barber. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I went in for a haircut. This has probably been a month ago or maybe six weeks ago. It's been a little while. Yeah. And and um, she was telling me she used the cash app and uh, somehow somebody sent her an email and and she ended up getting on a phone call with somebody who had her doing all kinds of stuff on her phone. 
And, uh, and next thing she, she knows, she's getting alerts from her bank saying that she just made withdrawals. And yeah. Um, anyway, the, the, so far the end of the story is she, I think she got left with $17 in the bank. Whoa. They, uh, and it was a business bank account. They cleaned it out. Mm -hmm. Uh, I didn't ask how much money was gone, but, um, see, this goes through one of my rants about, uh, a lawyer telling somebody that it's okay to use those apps to collect medical payments <laughs> because the patient is choosing it. And I'm like, there's so much more, but you know, the lawyer knows about technology. I mean, they were like, it's not, and I'm like, yeah, but there's more. But anyway, um, yes. Yeah. So and, if you're using any of those, you, you, you definitely got to be careful um, mm -hmm. because this is access to your money and, and the apps themselves may be secure. Um, but I, you, I will <laughs> say I use Zelle. Mm -hmm. it, it was created by the banks. They have a certain level of security requirements, those kind of things. The others, I didn't feel as comfortable. So I'll just say the only one I use is Zelle and I'll leave it at that after my research. So, yeah, but, but any hacker will tell you, um, it, it is a lot easier to hack the user than to hack the technology. Mm -hmm. So that's what people do now. The whole thing about ransomware, it's not people, it's not hackers hacking technology, it's hackers hacking humans. And so then just <laughs> opening the door and letting them in. Yeah. That's what it is that all that social engineering and making people understand you do have to think like the criminal mm -hmm. and that's how we end up opening the door in every one of those cases. Uh, but there was one, which I do have to bring up because we talk about it all the time and everybody's like, that doesn't happen. Let me tell you what happened. What had happened was mm -hmm. woman reported this whole thing. She was out of the country. So especially to note out of the country. Mm -hmm connected to hotel wi-fi did some banking and she said basically they were coming right behind her and they key logged everything she did and then wiped out her bank account hmm. now yeah she was using the app but the app didn't do anything you know you didn't have a vpn you didn't do these things so if you can't be sure that you are securing things properly and putting proper authentications in place and VPNs and all those kind of things, you shouldn't be using the apps. Yeah. But, <clears throat> but don't, don't blame the app, blame the user most of the time. Although we did just talk about the app being impacted by George's question. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, well, but, but you're right. It's most of the time. It's not yeah. that solar winds type things can't happen it's just that um compared to how many times a user gets uh hacked yeah <laughs> i mean it's no there's comparison. been millions of those just in the time we've been talking around the world <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, you are correct <clears throat> all right so now we get to the good part the juicy part all right are you ready this, this is how ransomware can create a social media privacy violation storm i mean it is bad it's yeah, very yeah. bad it is it's so, bad. Um, you want to start with yeah what so, had happened was <laughs> um so there's a there's a health group out in california right yep okay uh, scripts health so uh, s-c-r-i-p-p-s it's a um, system. I mean, it's a ton of hospitals and practices and all yep. clinics and everything. Uh, and and the the article was that the there's a hack that's forcing appointments to be canceled. And so um because <laughs> okay. everything's a hack. <laughs> yeah, everything's a hack. Uh and, and so you know, we're like, okay, let's let's see what this is all about. And we start going down the list here. And um, you know, not only is it talking about it's a ransomware attack. It's ongoing. It's been going on for days. Everything is shut down. Mm -hmm. Like technology wise down to their website. Gone. Shut mm -hmm. down. Can't even get to it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, as we're reading this article, we start seeing 
where the news has talked to patients and patients are giving their opinions about the incident, which are very telling, mm -hmm. uh, which then led us over to Facebook because somebody said, you know, that people are posting on these scripts help Facebook page. And that's where. <laughs> oh, it was like, oh, my goodness. We're like, did you see this one? Did you see that one? Oh, and David just said, we need to just start reading these and talking about them and just record. But yeah, here's um, what led us in the the quotes in the article. Uh, the, that we're first leading us in was what the patient said. And we're like, this is what we tell people right is mm -hmm. that uh, patients have had their appointments canceled and it mentions one specific patient the repercussions could be worse than what i expected maybe because he was supposed to have critical surgery for treatment for a rare muscular disease that he suffers from every day and the surgery was canceled making uh, you know, he's not having that and his medical history is inaccessible. So he knows nothing. And if this rare disease, uh, if I were to have a crisis, I'd have to go to the hospital. My concern is medical records are really extensive and I wouldn't have access to my history. Uh, and that's kind of pertinent because of my thing. So now he's trying to write everything down in case he needs it. Mm hmm. So that is a big note for you to put into your planning of if you treat patients with chronic disease, what happens if you can't get to those records and they need help? Well, it's probably worth mentioning because you brought this up when we were talking about it, that, you know, writing down all your medical records is, is great um, or having quote unquote photocopies and stuff like that. But if you go to another provider and you're handing them handwritten notes or photocopies of stuff. Um, I mean, they're not likely to, to really consider that all that much because you know, who knows, who knows if it's accurate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and so you have, you know, you've got another problem to deal with. Yeah. And so this gets back, this brings us around to the whole thing with information blocking and interoperability that we're trying to solve for, but that's so far from being, I mean, it's in its infancy almost which means we have to deal with these somehow. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, other patient unable to get his medication right away was contacted to pick it up a day later. I've been on this medication for 20 years. If I had not taken it for two days, I would have gone in a coma and died. Wow. Yeah. So this is not something to play with. But <laughs> then we went to Facebook. When I ran out about that guy, I'm thinking, dude, I'd have like a 30 day backup supply. If it's that <laughs> critical, that's a little close call for me. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, I was on one of those medications and they said, don't you, you have to stay on schedule. You have to be exact or it could cause you to have a stroke mm. some uh, or a seizure. It was a seizure. And I'm like, first of all, not sure I'm happy about taking this, but it's when I had nerve damage stuff. Mm -hmm. But to do that math, it, it's very stressful. And then to not have the meds, I can't even, I can't even comprehend. Yep. So, so these patients are worried that the hack um, is going to lead to more problems. And the article says people have vented their frustrations on the Scripps Health Facebook page. <laughs> and so we went. And so we dove into the rabbit hole. And uh, as of, as of right this second, the last post was 15 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, well, the, the one post had 145 reactions. I do not understand why some were thumbs up uh, because Facebook is, it has plenty of other options. Uh, <laughs> the crying person, the, Oh my person. But 217 comments, 67 shares. Or 221 something. now. Oh, yeah. I have an update. <laughs> you got to refresh. <laughs> oh, geez. So anyway, uh, there are so many comments in here that uh, it's, it's beyond just the patient problems. Now we're getting into serious privacy issues. Yes. Oh. 
uh, yes. brand brand damage. We talk about that. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's, let's see what some of these people have to say. Oh, it's two twenty two. <laughs> I just refreshed. There you go. I mean, it's, it's ongoing. Yeah, it's two people. minutes ago, right? Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, whoa. So uh, yeah, I gotta get them all back open here because there's so many. It takes a while to open them. But the, there are multiple things that we could talk about this in so many different ways, right? Because uh, it is about all the things that you should be thinking about in your um, incident response plan. Oh, yes. There are plenty of things in here. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which clearly communication with patients is something that we say should be in your incident response plan. And, and we always say you better have a plan B and a plan C for communication because it's super important mm-hmm. because if you don't figure out a way to communicate with your patients, they will figure out a way to communicate with you. And it, it and they'll tell everybody else about it. Oh, and yes. They'll tell two people and they'll tell two people. Um, so they do say that. Uh, all right. So this was uh, posted. So it all starts May 2nd at 331. Okay, Mm -hmm. and um, that they were hit uh, late on May 1st. So here we are on the 7th as we record this. It's still happening, clearly. But the whole paragraph and they talk about this has happened and we're doing this and, you know, we're utilizing backup processes and offline documentation, also known as paper. (laughs) But but then uh, it gets down here at the end. We're going to postpone things. You'll be rescheduled. You will need to reschedule. Okay, yeah. that, that's one because you hear a lot about this in just a minute. Um, our technical teams and vendor partners are working around the clock, which we know they do. They've notified law enforcement and governmental. So we know the FBI is in here. We know a lot of things are going on behind the scenes. We're well aware of that. Mm-hmm. And then this paragraph, we want to reassure our patients that our physicians and employees are well-trained and thoroughly prepared to respond to this sort of situation so that we can continue to care for the community's health care needs. Now let's proceed. <laughs> <laughs> With that in mind, let's show With you the evidence, <laughs> the evidence of that statement. Let's just start with, oh, I don't know, one of the first ones here. Uh, a, a patient says, I need to know what time my appointment is uh, on Monday. Nobody is there to tell me anything. I go to my emails and guess what it says. Log into Scripps. So that's not helping me. What time is my appointment? And Scripps Health <sighs> replies. And this is when we we were both like, uh-oh. Uh Scripps health replies, where is your appointment? In the middle of the comment thread, the patient then tells us the La Jolla gastric GI on Genesee at the hospital. My husband thinks it's at 930, but I, okay, I'm pretty sure we're in PHI territory. <laughs> pretty sure. Yeah, I'm smelling some PHI. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. And uh mm, and they say, mentioning the patient's name again, Mindy, uh, that's what we would so if all else fails, I can try calling the hospital. Maybe they can help. And so Scripps Health says, Yes, Wendy, that's what we would suggest. <laughs> Please stay tuned here on Facebook for updates as to when systems will be back up and running. Thank you very much. Uh, that was very friendly. Uh, that was four days ago. Um, so things progress. Uh, sent this message via, sent this via message because I'm not sure if you answer those lovely folks. Everybody's so nice. I'm sorry this whole tech thing is hitting you so hard. Hang in there. <laughs> I have a colonoscopy on Wednesday uh, and I'm a bit anxious. So, uh, but anyway, Mindy then replies, <laughs> Mindy, 
the 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 previous patient's PHI. So now patients from, are talking back and forth. Tells the other patient, "You're well, you know, I've just been informed the GI department should go to the hospital." or to emergency if you're having a problem. So now the patients are providing information to each other and sending hugs. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh. I know, but I mean, this is, I know it's very bad and serious. Yeah. However, this is what happens if there's no plan, no secure message. But clearly, somebody noted, because later, a lot of people with GI scripts were on top of this. But then, shortly thereafter, somebody went, you shouldn't be talking to them about their hurry. Don't do that anymore. Right. (laughs) Um, So then Mandy, uh, Manda, we have Mindy and Linda and Manda. I have a GI procedure tomorrow. I don't know why all the GI people are on top of this, though. Yeah. And what should I do? And Scripps Health says, are you, are you with me there? Yeah. You see what they say? Yeah. They, they're like, oh, contact the hospital. Then they realize, well, here's our better answer. No, no, you no. Just, <laughs> no. Like, yeah. Don't say it. Hi, Amanda. Please send us a DM with your full name, date of birth, <sighs> procedure location, and doctor name. We Let will do our very that. best to have someone contact you directly. Let me translate that for you. Please send us your PHI over a direct Facebook message, for which we have no BAA in place. It's which not they would never have one. It no. is not a secure method to communicate with patients. <laughs> I am now handing out what <laughs> I need everything on facebook yes. so i'm not having the conversation I, i'm not making the mistake of asking for all the information in the conversation but now i'm going to have it dm and they proceed from that point forward to say please dm us with your information yes uh, that that doesn't stop all the way up until today mm-hmm. when we saw they were still saying mm-hmm. please dm us mm-hmm. so now on mm-hmm. top of your ransomware that's likely a breach, you now have more breaches that you mm-hmm. are creating. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you know that this one is this this one's going to be looked at by a lot of people. Oh yeah, not just us right now. There's going to be so many post reviews of this because clearly there's some steer, serious stuff going on. If it's been down this this long, and we're still seeing nothing coming back up. Yeah, yes, but you and I know, and this is something that the the business slash healthcare community needs to understand. We know that when things like this happen, it's not a quick fix. It's days. Even even if you are able to restore. Right. You know, it's 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 not fast. (laughs) And if you pay, it's not fast. No. And, you know us IT people, we go out there and we're selling uh, business continuity services. And one of our sales pitches is, you know, have you back up and running within hours or minutes, you know, depending on what you want to pay for. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you have a ransomware attack, sometimes that's not the case because it's not a matter of we can get you back up and running. It's a matter of we have to preserve evidence. We have to do things in a certain way before we can get things back online. So you've got two things. You've got the let's rush to get everything back up and running. And the, we, we have to make sure we fully investigate this properly. And those things often are not going in the same direction. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. There, um, that is absolutely going in a lot of directions as it is right now, because there's further conversations that say, um, that the backup was also impacted and they can't restore. So now, who, now knows? who knows that though? I know because there's plenty. Here's the best part. There is a lot of other information besides patient stuff going on here because let's review the staff knows how to handle this. And we know this because 
a message. What about employees? I can't access Kronos or my email. Is that affected too? And somebody replies, everything is affected. No one can log into the computer system. And then somebody else says, business office 45 Rancho is also closed. No data given for us to start or come back to work. Most of us are working from home. Okay. So now we have employees that, mm -hmm. that are giving updates to the situation on social to media. Other. To each other. <laughs> yeah, to each other. <laughs> there you go. For all, everybody else to read, the media. Uh -huh. Like us. The Yeah, the us. I guess we're media. Um, patients. So so now, in addition to the patients trying to find a way to, to communicate with the office, now the employees are trying to figure out how to communicate with the office. Yep. Which, yep. you know, by the way, let's, let's recap. Because <laughs> just five minutes ago, we said, we want to assure you that our physicians and employees are well-trained and thoroughly prepared to respond to this sort of situation. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. Maybe not everybody. Obviously there are at least some who are not well-trained and prepared to respond to this sort of situation. Yep. And so, and this gets into, here's the next one. Uh, uh, <laughs> where you say even the website's down. Mm -hmm. and I, I, it could be the portal they're talking about i don't know we, did, we didn't go investigate we got too far down reading all these comments well i did go to the website and it doesn't pull anything up all right all. well there you go all right so your website is still down and it's been two days when will we be able to access your website for information Scripps yeah, health says <laughs> we are actively working to restore our systems as soon as it is safe we are working with the top global experts in the field of cybersecurity, as well as local and federal government. Systems will be restored as soon as possible. And then some other patient says, how long is as soon as possible? <laughs> and then somebody else says after that, the next, you know, yesterday, somebody pipes in because Scripps Health never answered how long as soon as possible. It's been four days and I need to have my stat test done that were canceled. How long? Mm -hmm. And somebody else pops in. This is where we start getting the, the information from technical people. Somebody else pops in. It's really impossible to say. It's not as simple as restore from backups with a database that size. And the piece that person says, well, we need an answer soon on what we're looking at here. If it's that big are we looking at weeks, months, find another medical center? This is all starting to become uncertain. <laughs> yeah. So now, you know, you've got all these people that have now become the project managers to respond to this <laughs> incident. Yeah. Um, and, and like this one lady, she says um, she, she's worried uh, if the uh, patients and staff have their personal information compromised. And when will, we know, when will we be notified if mm -hmm. our information has been compromised? To which I would say probably day 59. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it count 59 days yeah, from now. It, it won't be on social media, hopefully. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they won't notify you that way. Uh, but secondly, it won't be anytime in the next few days. Yeah. Um, and so that is here's somebody on Saturday. I, re I received two checks that were refunds from scripts on Sunday. There were five quote voucher refunds credited to my bank account. I have no idea why either checks or refunds would have been issued. Is this part of the breach? And then can you please DM us? <laughs> I also received a refund for $15 on April 1st. Not sure if that's related. April 1st, maybe April Fool's Day. I don't know. But now you're handling billing and financial questions on Facebook DM. Um, you know, people are just handing out their own information. I have an appointment with Dr. So-and-so on May 5th at this medical center. Can you, patients yeah. don't realize what they're doing. They're panicking. Mm-hmm because there's no process uh yeah this lady's like um i feel you i've been waiting a month for my appointment <laughs> this next week and mm -hmm. i can't get this done and uh yeah you know 
Hmm. What else do we have and, going on uh, here? We, the, the colonoscopy people that have been fasting and getting ready for their procedure oh, I know. and they can't find out whether or not, uh, that they can do it. And I'm like, uh, I would just say, I'm going to assume no, if I read through all the GI discussions, but, uh, oh, and the, the, uh, retired IT professional willing to volunteer if you need more hands on deck to restore mm -hmm. message me if it management could use and then goes on and then and then of course the, immediately somebody says given your experience maybe you could give us a ballpark on what to expect <laughs> yeah and the guy's like uh i got nothing except what you're reading uh it's smart of him mm-hmm but you know, I read the criminals also managed to sabotage the backups. It looks grim. It may not end until the FBI drags the culprits away to spend the rest of their lives in prison and suggest a hundred thousand counts of reckless endangerment consecutive sentences. If they have to rebuild their entire system from scratch and populate the database from paper records, that's a huge effort, which some volunteer effort might help <laughs> but brooks law of software engineering says adding manpower to a late software project makes it later <laughs> so uh you know but then yeah. people are still coming in and asking this person but i'm trying to find the one that was the best one well and then these are the scary ones i missed three cta and ct scans for an aneurysm no one's called to tell me when I could come back, you know, people are terrified and this is really, that's not funny at all, how scared they are, but they say it's reprehensible what people will do these days, putting innocent people's lives in danger. This is a big problem that people don't understand. Mm -hmm. It's not like there's one dude in a basement doing this. Mm -mm. And, and the more people are freaking out, the more the, the bad guys are going, yeah, this is good for us. Yeah. Yeah. There's a higher likelihood you're going to pay, which, you know, a lot of people in here are going, just pay it, just pay it, just pay it. <laughs> I'm like, it's not that simple. Even if you paid. It is not that simple. No. Um, and that, that's what a lot of people don't get. Yeah. Oh, here's the, here's the one. Here's the one that knows all about paying and why all you have to do is pay. <laughs> so we'll just say Sharon says if you pay the ransom they're pretty surely going to get all the records back for the sake of your patients pay the ransom and they're like yes this is what needs to happen it's getting scary and then sharon goes on an entire dissertation of a very long post about you know while there's no guarantee if you pay that you'll get the data back it is a chance and then says uh, I took the chance after emailing with them, meaning she's had ransomware attack. Mm -hmm. I took the chance after emailing with them and pleading my case. I got everything back, all my documents, photos, everything. It was scary. <laughs> my computer repair guy helped me with all of this, and it was the first time for both of us. I was lucky. But, but the only thing to do is pay the ransom. So many are affected here and in dangerous health. They should pay the ransom. They have failed their patients by not fighting for these things. Okay, so here's the thing. Even if they paid the ransom, there's an article that we're going to cover next week, which is going to be about ransomware. 92% never get all the data back. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. No, it's it, you know to say uh, you should stand up for your patients. I mean, th there's life and death situations here. They understand that, um, but um, I don't think so many people who are on here full of technical knowledge, making sure they're telling people, um, you know, about how to manage their security. Uh, I don't, 
very few people actually understand how complex this is. And it does remind me about what it, there was a, another health system that got hit with ransomware last year. And we had a quote from the president in an article that we talked about in the episode where he said, if you had told me it would be like this, that it would take six weeks, I would have told you there's no way. Mm -hmm. I think some of these people should read that. Here's a post from a lady. This is, this is pretty heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. um, she writes, uh, I'm really needing to get my medical records to be sent to the hospital in Stanford for neurological surgery due to my rare progressive brain disease. The only way I can get this done is for Scripps to send my medical records. I've been through so many tests and procedures that I wouldn't want to go through all over again. Please, this is the only way I, that can save my life. Yeah, we're no longer, you know, here's somebody that had a biopsy and they can't get the results to know what treatment to take. They're terrified. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like when people go through those biopsies and are waiting to get the answer so they know what step to take. It's, and then more and more are now joining in. They've had a bad diagnosis. This is, and we can't get information. We can't get the care that we need. Uh, you know, and at this point, I haven't even, you know, they, they're actually, it looks like that they uh, have stopped replying. They've, it's gotten so out of control. And then somebody asked, what about hackers gathering our medical history and also all of our personal information? Uh, these things could come back to haunt us for the rest of our lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And people don't understand it. Yes. This gets back to the people that just don't understand. So here's one. Can't you do a better job updating us? Literally, our lives are in your hands. Mm -hmm. So you're, you know, you're seeing a shift as you as we move from four days, four or five days ago to, to today, you're seeing a shift from panic to anger. Yeah. And fear. Mm -hmm. There wasn't so much fear in the beginning. Now there's fear. Yep. And then yep. people continue. Now they're worried about their information. They're worried about their health. They're worried, you know, now you are truly creating stress for these people. Right. And many of them don't need to be under this kind of stress. Right. And this is why we say it's about patient care. Hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, <laughs> Because, you know, here's somebody that's like, it's super irresponsible to not have any backup. Arrogant to think you were immune to a hack. I no longer feel safe with Scripps Health. Why the silence? Just pay the ransom and get back, get back people's lives depend on it. Okay. We know it's not that simple. Uh, but you know, I don't know if you looked up under that, but somebody that apparently... Um, either works at Scripps or has some kind of insight says, well, they have backup servers, but they were also hacked. And then, you know, it goes on to talk about some other stuff. So somebody's got inside knowledge. And, and so again, you've got people who are close to the situation who are now responding to people on Facebook. And so yeah. you, you think about that when something like this happens, you want all communication that goes to the public and to the media to flow through one channel. And this is already just so off the rails. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and so the last one, five days since an update, lack of communication to patients is really inexcusable. Even if it's more bad news that the vendor partner is working tirelessly to get this resolved. You guys must have knowledge by now of what has been compromised and that should be shared with patients and employees, our info and medical records. So you notice there, they mentioned employees. Mm -hmm. So now the employees are frustrated. Oh yeah. There is no way that any amount of investment in PR or, I mean, 
think uh, this is huge. So if you're the provider of care and you're the one in the community and you're hit and this Facebook thing, if you're down for 10 days, your patients are going to be on Facebook talking. Oh yeah. And they're going to get terrified yep. if you're not prepared to handle them. And this thing is massive to have. I don't remember how many hospitals it said Do you it's a, uh, 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 let's see. Four main hospitals. It says originally in the, the article, two of the four main hospitals and backup servers that reside in Arizona were shut down. Providers and other clinicians are leveraging patient paper records as telemetry has been impacted at most care sites. So you can't get people on the phone. All four hospitals in Encinitas, La Jolla, San Diego, and Chula Vista placed on emergency care diversion for stroke and heart attacks. That story from Germany last mm -hmm. year where we said it's official. Someone did die because yep. a hospital did that. How long before you think we hear from that? Mm -hmm. The website's down, the patient care, everything. They're trying to do what they can, but this is bad. Here's, a, here's another problem I see. At some point, somebody, I'm assuming that works at Scripps, says, um, you know, call this number and uh, for an update. And so somebody responded, well, I have been calling that number. And their response was, um, just keep calling it every day and check and see if there's an update. My, the, my problem with that is <clears throat> you should be driving people to a central location where they can see if there's an update, like a web page or something like that. Don't flood your phone systems with people calling every single day wanting to know if there's an update. Yeah. So that's I mean, just going to create so many more things. problems. So the big issue <clears throat> we brought us here was the privacy concerns. And I, you know, there's a massive amount of privacy breach going on in the beginning of this conversation. And then they just literally, they just quit replying mm -hmm. because there was people are just pounding away. So there's nothing and lack of communication is very bad. Mm -hmm. Unsecured communication, very bad. Employees talking very bad. It's only exacerbating the situation they're in. So while some of it is humorous to us, in the beginning, it was. In the beginning, we're like, please don't do this. Please. And they did it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, please don't answer. Oh, and they did. But um, the biggest issue is by the time you get to the end, we truly have panic, and, <clears throat> excuse me, panic and fear and concern about life and death over ransomware. So that's why next week we're going to review some updates on ransomware, things like how bad it is getting. That CISA just did a review of a brand new ransomware gang they're tracking mm -hmm. called Five Hands. Um, and it, we've got to do a better job, people. We've got to do a better job. Yeah. Yeah, we do. And, you know, it's we've been here for years with the same message. It's about mm -hmm. patient care, privacy, security, compliance stuff, all that. It's about patient care. All this stuff is about patient care. This is an absolute perfect example of why you do all those things so that you can provide a level of patient care that people expect mm -hmm. and how to respond to these things and have an instant response plan. We're not going to tell you that doing all this stuff with privacy, security, and compliance is going to make you, um, you know, never get hit with something. It's going to drastically reduce those chances, but you should always be prepared 
for this stuff to happen. You should Especially, assume that you would be in this position, no matter the size of your entity. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, somebody once said the only difference between people who are hacked and people who aren't is that the people who are hacked know about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> the people say that aren't just don't know that they've been hacked already mm -hmm. um, or are going to, but uh, you know, it's just, it, it's not going to get any better uh, on ransomware. That's not going away anytime soon. Uh, mm -hmm. And the, and the whole attitude of just pay them further um, pushes the ransomware uh, gangs and all that to keep doing it. I mean, it's a major, major moneymaker. Well, and, you know, the FBI is going to say, don't pay them. But the bottom line is, even if you do pay them, we talked about it many, many times. Even if you do pay them and best case, you get all your data back. How mm -hmm. long does it take to actually decrypt all of the stuff? Mm -hmm. Every single device. It's not like you, you can't, you have to touch every single device. Yeah. I mean, that in and of itself is probably days. Yeah. If not, weeks. if you're lucky, yep. something this size, mm -hmm. how many devices, thousands mm -hmm. of devices have to be touched by an individual to bring them back to life, even if they paid. And if they paid and they were lucky enough to actually get the data back. So yeah. more than likely, they're going to get part of it back, maybe uh, not important parts damaged, and some of it will be damaged. Yeah. Again, how do you how do you even know the integrity of the data is even there anymore? Yeah. And what would it take to even try to figure that out? Yeah. It, yep. mean, it's, a, it's a problem. It's a big problem. So anyway, uh, as you listen to this, I hope that uh, you have a a um, a new outlook. If you if you're the type of person that needed a different outlook. <laughs> Yeah. On, this, on this situation. I know most of our listeners, you know, we're preaching to the choir a lot of times. Um, most of our listeners are, are the people that are doing things right and they're taking this stuff seriously. If that's not you and you're listening, uh, get your head out of the sand um, because this needs to be addressed. If you know somebody who's not doing this properly mm -hmm. or who might not be doing these things properly, send them this episode mm -hmm. because the only way we can that we can come against these things in, in a way that's going to make any difference at all is we've all got to take this seriously and take steps in the right direction to start protecting patients. And make sure that you assume that you need to do this and you have skills and plans in place and hope that you never need to use them mm -hmm. because your patients need you to do this. They need you to do this. And we're going to have a link to this feed in the show notes so that you can go read it yourself and see what it says. And yeah, I'm sure it'll be by the time this comes out, who knows what's going to be coming out. Yeah. But share that with anybody that doesn't think that patients need to know things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm just really hoping that we have no, um, no really serious issues or deaths because of this that, that come and out of it, this. it is not looking good it seems quite grim yeah so i hope those folks do okay though i really really do employees staff everybody's trying to figure out what's going on and it it's not where any of us ever want to be mm -mm. so while we like to have some fun. Sometimes we have to make sure you understand it ain't all fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. All right, folks, remember to follow us and share us out on your favorite social media site. <laughs> I think this is the grimmest we've ever left an episode. <laughs> I know, right? We should, you should do something stupid. Go ahead. It, it won't take but a minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, people just, I'm, we need them to take it seriously. And we joke about it all the time. And that, and that, you know, gets points across and all that. This is one of those times where it's just a matter of, honestly, uh, you get to a point where you, you really want to just physically pin somebody up against the wall and like shake your finger at them and like, seriously, this is mm -hmm. no joke. You matter. No matter how much we joke about it, you've yeah. got to get something done here. 
Um, it, yeah. It's, you know, it's the, mm-hmm. the, these people that, you know, I've talked to prospects sometimes and they're like, Oh, you know, we we're, we're not a target or yeah, we've got this and, you know, and we'll go to paper. Yeah. If it happens to us, we'll just close down. And it's, you know, it's that type of attitude that what makes me want to put my foot up their butt <clears throat> because it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And, and it would be one thing if it was every so often I see this attitude, but it's prevalent. And it just drives me nuts. Yeah. So that's all I'm saying. That's all I got to say about that. (laughs) So if you see me in person and you're one of these people that aren't doing it right, you better keep your eye on my right foot. (laughs) (laughs) Told you he could do something stupid, folks. There we go. There you go. trick for the day. I did it. So, (laughs) All right. Remember, (laughs) HIPAA is not about compliance. It's about patient care.